Hey guys, uh, sorry I'm not there today, uh, just I don't feel well. Um, hopefully you can, uh, knock this video out if you want to do it as a, as a class and project it or just, uh, throw some headphones in and do it that way. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to go over three different things in this, um, R.6, and so we'll just get into it. The first objective is determining restricted values for a rational expression. And essentially, what we're really doing with this is determining what values are going to make denominators equal to zero. Because as we know, or as you should know, you can't divide by zero. This is undefined, regardless of what's up here. This is undefined. So what we want to do is eliminate um, any values that will make denominators equal zero. Okay, That's the gist of this first part. Pretty straightforward. And what we're going to do is just take denominators, set them equal to zero, oops, and then solve. Okay, so x equals three. So what we actually say is x cannot equal three. And the reason we say that is because if x did equal three, this denominator would equal zero. So that's the notation. x is not equal to three. That's the restriction on the variable for x. It can be anything, but it can't be three. Okay. For b, the first thing you need to do is factor this. So go ahead and do that, and then you're going to set all of its factors equal to 0 and solve. So pause it if you need to do that. Hopefully you recognize that this is a difference of squares. And so this ends up being factored as c plus 4, c minus 4. We set each of those equal to 0, so c plus 4 equals 0, so c cannot equal negative 4. And over here, c minus 4 cannot equal 0, so it cannot equal positive 4. So those are the two values that c cannot be. Those, that's the restriction. They are restricted. c can be anything but 4 or negative 4. And again, the reason is it would make this bottom equal 0, which is bad. And then finally on the last one, um, when I have two variables, that one's actually pretty straightforward too. It's just 7ab cubed equals 0. So either a equals 0 or b equals 0, and that would make denominator equal to 0. So a can't be 0, b can't be 0, and those are my restricted values. Okay. So again, pretty straightforward. What values will make denominators equal 0, and we throw them out? That's the restriction. That's what that's about. The next part of this for objective two is just um, simplifying rational expressions. Okay, so here's objective two. So we're going to have a, a fraction with a bunch of numbers and variables in it, and we're just going to reduce it. That's essentially what all this is. Okay, it's objective three that's going to take us a little longer to deal with. So here are two examples. Here's the trick is this. Factor everything as much as you can first, then after that, reduce. Okay. Um, oftentimes, they are also going to say, and state the restricted values, so we're going to do that as well for this one. So go ahead and factor the first one, and let's see what you get. Pause it if you need to, and work on that factor, and then we'll try to cancel some stuff. So on the top, I'm going to get a greatest common factor of x, and that's times the quantity x minus 8. On the bottom, um, I'm looking for factors of negative 8 because I, co I have a trinomial with a leading 1. Factors of negative 8 that add up to negative 7. So those would be negative 8 and positive 1. And so what I have here is x minus 8, x plus 1. So right away I can identify the restricted values. x can't be equal to 8, because that would make that 0 x cannot be equal to negative 1. So if, even if you want, just to go ahead and say that right off the bat, okay, x cannot equal 8 or negative 1. Now I just have to get to canceling. There's um, something, a term that I've used before called loners and groups. I cannot take a binomial and cancel part of the binomial with a monomial. This is a loner. It's a monomial. This is a group because it contains more than one term. In this case, I can cancel an entire group, x minus 8 over x minus 8, and I'm down to my final answer of x over x plus 1. 
Do not, and I'm going to talk about this on the very last side, do not try to cancel these. This is a loaner, a monomial. It's just by itself. It's not being added or subtracted with anything. This is not. Since it is being added to one, they are connected and they stay forever connected. So don't try to cancel those. Okay. Again, pause and we'll work on the next one. Um, there's two ways that I would do B. Okay. You could factor the top. And the top, there's a 3 in common. So I could take a 3 out. And then I'm left with 1 plus 3 root 5. And that's all over 6. Then I could reduce 3 over 6. So 3 goes into 6 twice. There are no restricted values because I don't have any variables in the bottom. So my final answer is 1 plus 3 square roots of 5 over 2. Okay, That's one way to do this. I'm going to show you another way. One of the things I like to do whenever I have a loaner on the bottom, I split it be amongst the terms on the top. So for example, I can reduce 3 over 6. And I have, you have to do both. You can't just do 1. And 9 and 6. So what goes into all three of those? Of course, it's a 3. And so I divide them all by 3. 1, 3, 2. 1, 3, 2. Either one of those works. I don't care which one you use. That's how you're going to want to reduce those. No variable in the denominator, so no restricted values. Okay? That is objective 2. You'll, you'll have done problems like this before. And lastly, the last objective is multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Okay, this one takes a little more time, and there's some more steps that I'm going to give you, um, and I'll, we'll talk about that. First step, turn all division problems into multiplication problems, and we do that by keep change flip. So we're never going to deal with division other than the fraction itself. We're going to change every problem to a multiplication problem, and once we do that, then we can follow the same steps for every problem. Okay. So once we do that, the next thing you're going to want to do is factor everything completely, just like we did with the last problem. Uh, the last problems we factored everything first. Then we're going to cancel tops with bottoms like we did and simplify as far as we can. And we're going to state what our restricted values would be. And that's it. Okay. So we're going to go through a bunch of examples. This one is already a multiplication problem, so I can just get to it. So what I want you to do is try to reduce. There's all kinds of different ways you can reduce. Tops with bottoms. We can go straight up and down. We can go diagonally. It doesn't matter. Pause it. Go through it. And there's lots of different paths to get to the right answer. Okay. And maybe you use my path. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Hopefully you still end up with the same answer. But pause it and let's go through it and then come back. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to focus on... Let's focus on the A's first. So... At the end, I'm going to actually make this one giant fraction. So with a on the bottom, a to the third on top, that's going to give me an a squared on top somewhere. Okay. There are no other b's except for this one, so there's going to be a, a b squared still on the bottom. Okay. So that takes care of that. Then I'm going to deal with the x's. So I got an x and an x to the fourth which means I have x to the third on the bottom, and then the y's cancel. So that takes care of all my variables. Now what I have to worry about are all the numbers, and you can do them in pieces. Um, I see this, and I see 6 goes into 18 three times. I like that. And then I see that 3 goes into 21 seven times. So that takes care of all the numbers besides the 15 and the 7, and they don't have any common factors. So I think I'm done. So 7's on top, 15's on the bottom. We can't reduce anymore, so that's something you want to look for if you didn't quite reduce it all the way. okay. Now, you could multiply 6 times 21 and 15 times 18, but I don't know, whatever those numbers are, um, I'm not sure that you're going to know factors of that. I think you're better off taking a little bit of factor at a time. And of course, you could have taken a 3 out of those, or a 3 out of those, okay, or a 3 out of those, and then and worked your way toward the answer. Lots of different paths. At the end of the day, there's only one correct answer. Next problem is going to be a little more complicated. It's going to be a division problem. So right away, you see that. You go, all right, keep change flip. Let's turn this into a multiplication problem. 
and go ahead and work through that one. All right, I'm going to use the same strategy. I'm going to deal with the variables first. I got a to the fourth, and I got a squared. And so I've got, means I have a squared on the bottom. In this problem, I have a b to the third on the bottom and a b squared on the top, so I'm going to have a b on the bottom. Um, let's deal with the m. I got an m there and an m cubed on the bottom, so that means I have an m squared. Looks like I just have a t squared left over. We've dealt with all the variables, so there's a t squared up there. Now i got to start canceling numbers, okay? So 7 into 21, 3 times. Easy peasy. Um, 16 and 24. What goes into both of those? 8, I believe. So I can cancel that with an 8. Cancel that with an 8. So I'm left with this 2 on top and a 3 times 3 on the bottom. So there's my 2. And 3 times 3 is 9. Looks like we've got our bases covered. Everything is there. Nothing can be reduced. Dunzo. Two more. Maybe one more. Yeah, I think I have two. All right, so again, we have a division problem. We're going to keep changing it. Now we got to factor and reduce. So do that. Oh, actually, we are going to do this one, and then I'm going to talk about that, that uh, loner group thing that I alluded to earlier. So go ahead and knock that one out. All right, so when I factor, you got to factor first. Don't try to start canceling, you know, don't try to cancel these or cancel those or anything like that. You got to factor first. We're looking for groups. This, by itself, is a group of three. Okay, so we want to break it down into factors. Uh, fortunately, this is leading one, so I've got factors of 20 that add up to negative 9. X minus 4, X minus 5. On the bottom, I'm looking for factors of 21 that add up to 10. So X plus 3, X plus 7. Then over on this one, I've got a greatest common factor. So I'm going to take a 6x, or 6 out, and it's just going to be x plus 7. And then on the bottom, I'm looking for factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1. So that's x minus 4, x plus 3. All completely factored now, we're good. Now I can cancel groups with groups, tops and bottoms. Doesn't matter if they're right on top of each other or diagonal from each other, doesn't matter. So, first one I see, I see x minus 4 and an x minus 4. Um, I see an x plus 7 and an x plus 7, and I think that's it. Don't try to cancel this 6 with a 3. This 3 is connected to the x. You can't separate it. This is a loner. This is a group. So my final answer, and I'm going to just slide that 6 in front, x minus 5. That's all that's left on top. And on the bottom, I have x plus 3, quantity squared, because I have two of those. Okay? Now the last page, hopefully that, that seems good, is where we're talking about those loners and groups. This is on page 62 in your book. I'm not going to go through all the little steps, but there's something that's really kind of important here. Okay, um, And that has to do with when I have subtraction. So this is all factored, and this was a difference of cubes. I know we didn't talk about difference of cubes, but that's okay. When I have subtraction and the order of the numbers is off for a binomial, okay? In reality, and, and what you see here in blue, that's what I want to draw your attention to, is you can cancel them, but they cancel as a negative 1. And why that's important, if I look at this um, x minus 2 over 2 minus x a little closer, if I factor a negative 1 out of the bottom, okay, then I'm left with minus 2 plus x. Well, that's really x minus 2. So the reason that I can cancel uh, binomials with subtraction when the order is reversed is because I'm left with a negative 1 because of that. So when you see, if you're ever in a situation where you see a binomial over another binomial that look pretty close to the same, and it's subtraction, and it's opposite, that's what this says right here, you can cancel them as a negative 1. Hopefully you've seen things like that before. Um, obviously with plus it doesn't matter. If it was x plus 2 and 2 plus x, those are the same thing. It's when it's subtraction, when the order matters. That's when you can cancel them to a negative 1. So if you run across something like that and you're, you're thinking, man, I should be able to reduce those, you can. And it just reduces to a negative 1. 
where you put the negative, put it up top, put it at the bottom. You can put it out front. Anywhere works good, okay? All right, uh, knock this homework out. Uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions about anything. I'm just going to be laying around because that's all I can do. Um, but be respectful of your classmates and the substitute, so hopefully you can uh, be productive today. Take care. See you Monday.